In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, or good morning. It's, we're in that noon hour between daylight saving time and, and uh, standard time. But we are gathered here for a timeless ritual. The ritual today where we remember Anita Bontua and we remember her entrance into eternity with God, and so we celebrate her life today. As we come together, um, feel free to uh, respond as you are able to, to the different prayers, and uh, let us raise our hearts. And as we enter into this, let us also acknowledge God's constant desire to help us by giving us his mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith profess a son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Anita, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated to listen to God's word. A reading from the book of wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seem in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if in the eyes of men Indeed, they, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him 
shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you receive a spirit of adoption through Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. 
for creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For cre creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not, that, not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The Word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On one occasion, Jesus spoke thus I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. To me, all you who, are, who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, my condolences to all of you who knew Anita and the ongoing assurance of prayers from this community of faith for her and for you all and for everyone during this time of COVID as well. Later in our liturgy, a couple of friends who knew her well will speak in testimony for her. My task this morning is to speak of the God connection Anita knew in this life and how it touched her, and now the God connection she knows in heaven, seeing God face to face. To acknowledge that Anita was a faith-filled person, you have but to think of her quick ability to make friends, and especially the context of being a loving and caring nurse. It is a true gift of service that enables one to be an extension of the love of Christ. And I would guess, like all nurses, hers was complex, filled with technical knowledge, as well as a sense of compassion and working with various boundaries between institutional directions, personal commitments, and faith-filled belief, and limited 
only because all of us are limited in our humanity. Our first reading from Wisdom describes the interplay between our holy desires and the realities of our world. You have to work to be faithful and caring, but this is how God tests us. Like gold in the furnace, the text says, and her life is testament that God accepts the sacrifices she made for friends, family, and patients to care for them all. As I looked at the picture I had of her, I find her face joyful and childlike, meaning a sense of youngness and playfulness about it. And whenever I hear a scripture text talking about being childlike, or the call to follow Christ with the heart of a child, or as in Romans today, those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, there is a timeless sense of those who get what that means. The Romans text connects the children of God to suffering in the sense that this world is always seeking to weigh us down. And it reinforces that Christ himself knew the weight of the world. Friends who did not always get him, spectators who got him or followed him as groupies, but were not always quite ready to follow completely where he led. And the opposition folks who intentionally would not listen to what he said, until near the end, when they listened with the intent of making his words fit their context and form the accusation that led to his death. That's the way of this world. It can take us many directions, and people that aren't intent on the way of God often get wound up in selfishness and go their own way and aren't ready for what God is offering. And it is only when we can see the weight of Christ in pain suffering and agony that we can really appreciate one another's pain, agony, and suffering. Something I think most nurses can plainly see and empathize with. But Paul takes all that pain and throughout this passage talks about the transformation by the power of the Spirit, our adoption as followers of Christ, and it leads to the glory yet to be revealed. I get a sense that Anita had insight into that glory and had her own unique way to share it. And having shared it here and with all of you and all whose lives she touched, she gets the full, inslot, the, the full onslaught of being glorified with Christ now. Come play in eternity, Christ calls to her. Jesus' canticle of praise in our gospel today is all about people who work hard, play hard, pray hard, and put that all together because that is who they are, how they act, how they choose to share their life in service to others. Anita knew Christ and shared him. She would say to us here and now, all of you who know him, you share him too. And we do know him, and we know he is always inviting us to see our lives transformed by the service we render each other and by living lives full of hope and attention to God. Because we are celebrating Anita's life in this memorial mass today, the familiar gospel passage, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, stands out. And even when we talk about Christ's yoke in this life being easy and his burden light, it is not because the work we do is not difficult, not because we don't have to invest our whole selves, not because we don't have important decisions and choices to make about everything. But the heart of the passage is, and the good news triumphant is, we do not do it alone. Christ walks with us. She knew that. She wants us to know that. And finally, it is in the moment of death that there is an even bigger transitioning of understanding. The final yoke is Jesus' resurrection itself. That, that is what is laid on her and laid on all of us. 
And the burden then, we would then become children of light. We cross over. We are light. That is Christ's promise and our hope. Be at peace, Anita, and may we all celebrate the light that awaits us all. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Anita, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased relatives, and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died during this time of pandemic, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nurses and all who care for family and friends, that their efforts may bring much comfort to their patients and peacefulness to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Anita's family and friends, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for all of our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings for the salvation of your servant, Anita, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving 
this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Anita, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from this earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, who all were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For indeed it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we stand and pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And now in these COVID times, we invite you to socially distance, offer a sign of safe peace to one another, and peace to all of you out there at home as well. Sins of the world, have mercy. 
During this time of COVID, communion for us is even a little different than usual. Ushers will guide you forward, so the flow for communion will be toward the middle aisle. The ushers will <clears throat> gesture for you to come to them, and then they will spritz your hands with sanitizer. We invite you to rub that in. And then as you proceed forward, they will alternate, will alternate sides, but keep six foot distance from each other. Uh, and as you move forward to receive communion from the two ministers, uh, simply receive in your hand, and then move to the yellow uh, decals, which is the place where you may safely drop your mask and consume and put the mask up and continue the route. So it's from the middle to the sides. So it's, it's one big circle. If you have any questions, the ushers will help you with that. If you are here with us for the first time and believe as we do that this is truly the body and blood of Christ, you are welcome to receive. If you're not so certain about that and would just like a blessing, just put your hands over your, your chest and I will give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word and that so shall be.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Anita may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. As I said in the homily, we have a couple of people that are going to uh, give testimony to Anita's life. I invite them to come forward and the microphone is yours. Good afternoon. I am Malu. I'm Anita's cousin. First, I would like to thank Father Brad for allowing us to hold this memorial mass at Old St. Mary's. Thank you, Meryl, Jelin, Sally, for making all this happen. Edith, May, Dennis, you have always been there for her through the years, and most especially during her last four months. To all our relatives and friends who offered comfort, advice, and most especially prayers, I thank you. Elsie, I could not thank you enough. You have cared for her tirelessly above and beyond what's called for. I've known you for 40 years. Anita knew you for 30. She trusted you. I trusted you wholeheartedly. My family and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Because of you, I kept my sanity. Anita was born on July 7, 1940, in Talamban, Cebu City in the Philippines. She was not just a cousin, she was part of the family. I knew her all my life. She was a very dedicated daughter to her mother, Isabel. Anita left for the United States as a nurse, worked all through the years as a nurse, and lived here for at least 50 years of her life until she retired from Michael Reese Hospital. I was allowed to come to the United States on one condition, that I live with her. She taught me how to use the vacuum cleaner and the washing machine, and that was almost 35 years ago. My cousins and I regard her as our matriarch here in America. She was always there for us. We may never, we may, actually not really, we may not agree with her all the time, but she was always treated with respect. She was always there for us. Anita loved life. She loved her independence, and she traveled extensively. She took a while to warm up to my husband, and it was only then that they realized that they had one thing in common, and that was sports. She was a Bulls fan, Bears, and Cubs. She took time to take us to the White Sox game because my husband is a White Sox fan. That was her. Anita was caring, kind, compassionate, and generous. As what Father Brad had said, being a nurse really fit her. I remember the times when she'd call me to tell me she was going out of town because a friend is having some difficulties. We had a tradition to get together every New Year's Day. 
holiday dinners and celebrations are never going to be the same. She will be dearly missed. My son could not be here today, but he wrote a tribute to his Tita Nita. My Tita Nita was with me since I came into this world. She was with my ma'am at the hospital. My earliest memories are of family gatherings with her. The first thing I remembered for ever saying to me, her ever saying to me, it's so good, right? She, that, she said that all throughout the years, whenever we were eating, we were always eating. I can't underestimate how much food we ate every holiday she was here, every life celebration she was there, and a whole swath of meals in between. We ate and we talked, and that's how I came to understand what family was, that comforting sense of normalcy. My tita was the bridge to my extended family and to Talamban. The stories of the way things were, tales of my grandparents, tales of my mom and her siblings, and tales of the island itself. She used to joke about how much trouble my mom was as a child. She had tales of the Japanese occupation, tales of relatives I never got to meet, tales of being an immigrant. Her stories even propelled my career when she let me interview her for a paper in college. I miss her stories. Her whole family was filled with these warm memories. I think she filled all of our lives with warm memories. It's still difficult to accept that she's no longer here. I know we were, <clears throat> I know we were really blessed to see her so close to the end and that so many friends and family wish they could also be here. I believe, she, <clears throat> I believe she set an example, an example that make all our families at our core is the moments and stories we share. And I'm truly thankful that Tita Nita was a part of my story and that I got to be part of hers. So let's let us all celebrate her life with our loved ones and our families because this is what she wants us to do. May God grant Anita eternal peace and happiness. Amen. Thank you. My name is, thank you, Father, for having us. My name is Imelda Gomez. I am a classmate of Anita Buntuyan. And for 58 years since we graduated, we have like <clears throat> part ways. And then 20, 25 years ago, I found out that she's in Chicago, and I was in Chicago. So that's how I become a member of our Alumni Association. Anita is a very kind person. Whenever our association will have a celebration out of state, she would insist that uh, I would come with her and she, she will insist that she has to pay my fare from her uh, mileage. So I usually go with her when I have celebration in uh, out of state like in Las Vegas or uh, San Diego. And I just want to, to tell you three incidents when we were uh, together in our 25 years here in Chicago, uh, that she was so contented and she was so happy. One incident was, 
She invited Ms. Lumbab, our Director of Nursing, and uh, she said, I would like to invite her to be our guest speaker in our 50 in our celebration in Chicago. And so after three, three days of celebration, I invited them to my place. I live in a building that is 102 floors, and I live in 59th floor, and I invited them for a breakfast before they go back to their state. And we were having breakfast. There was like 12 of us, and Ms. Lumbab said, Oh, Anita, I'm so happy that uh, <clears throat> you invited me here in Chicago. From now on, I don't have to work so much and going to heaven because I'm already here in 59th floor. I am already happy going to heaven. That's what she was telling. So I don't have to work myself going to heaven. I'm already ha happy to heaven. And so Anita was whispered to me and she said, Oh, I'm so happy that Miss Lumbab is so happy to, to be here for the breakfast. We took pictures and uh, <clears throat> and she did tell us that she's so happy and she's going to tell her family uh, in the Philippines that she has been to, to a place where uh, she is already happy to heaven. And another incident with Anita also was uh, <clears throat> three times she invited three beloved priests from the Philippines. And uh, every time the priest comes, she will tell me that I'm going to bring him to your place because my living room is overlooking the city of Chicago, so we will have food in there, breakfast and everything. So every time one of these beloved press come to my place, we will do the same thing. We will have food, and then they will be overlooking the city of Chicago, and then they will have pictures. And then the, the best part of it is that I have three priests who have blessed my house <laughs> every time me Anita is share. And all I can tell you that is Anita is a very, very, very good person. She, Dennis is here. We, she always drive with us all over the, uh, the Illinois. And uh, she's very kind to people that really need her help. I know she's still in contact with all her classmates and her friends who, who need her care as a nurse. She would, tell, she would go with them wherever they need to go to grocery and whatever they need for her uh, care with their physical abilities. So she is also kind and very caring to other people. And uh, with all the things they have been doing here, coming here and doing, I merely to thank for the arrangement of my father. And for all of you who are here today, in behalf of Anita, I really thank you she was very good to me, and please in peace, Anita. And by the way, there is a parsimon from one of our graduates in 1965. There's a parsimon outside that she sent from California yesterday, so you guys can, can share with it in the table outside. And rest in peace, Anita. We love you, and we'll be praying for you. There is a traditional song, well, that you're about to encounter a couple traditional songs. One of the traditional songs at a Catholic funeral is called the In Paradiso. It is uh, the invocation of the angels and saints in heaven that we pray for the departed soul. So we usually say that before our final farewell. So uh, I invite you to listen to the In Paradiso.
Lord be with you. Together let us pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his every kindness and give you his peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is now ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord as we love and serve each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And our, our closing song is a, a special and traditional Tagalog song. And, uh, and I forgot the, the, the English title. I will never forget you. I will never forget you coming from the prophet Isaiah. So. <laughs> Thank you.